Hello everyone and welcome to Configmas 2024 and the Deployment Research YouTube channel. My name is Johan Aridmark and in this video I will show you how you can manage drivers for OS deployment with Config Manager. And that means of course demo time. So in Config Manager today there are about three different ways you can work with drivers. I call them the Jurassic era the legacy era and the modern era. The Jurassic era has its roots all the way back to Config Manager 2007, where Microsoft recommended that you import the drivers into the database and then created the packages and added them in. And I will tell you why that is not a, a great idea, but let me show you what, how that one worked. So here is a sequence configured like you, you did it back then. So if I go to the sequence, I would have one driver package. I would have a condition for that package to only install if you're matching that driver or that model. And then I would add in a checkbox to use this um, to install those drivers. This one was not available from the beginning, but because of a bug back in the ADK 1607, Microsoft added that in in Config Manager and people have kind of continued to use it ever since. I was actually able to find that old article. It's long gone from TechNet, but on the internet nothing is, well, truly gone. So I was able to find it with the Wayback Machine and sure enough, this was the solution back from uh, 2016. Frank Roy has did a post and then they had that fix in the technical preview 17 of 6 of Config Manager and that's where that checkbox came in play. But if I go back to my sequence here, this package is a very ineffective package because that package is a driver package here and you should not have driver packages here. These packages are imported into the database, they are bloated in the database for no good use at all and if I take the content of one of these packages, for example, the 5320 here, and just check the data source for it. And just do properties. So this is a package that is 5 gigs in size, thousands of small files, very ineffective to distribute, very ineffective to download, and downright terrible to peer if you're doing any sort of peering. So. That's why we don't recommend, or I don't recommend, using legacy driver packages uh, from that era. Now, a better option is to create normal packages with drivers. Because when you do, you can determine how you want to store them. So if I take this 5320 package, and look at the data source. You can see it's a single WIM file. And last time I checked, two gig of content is less than five gig of content. Way quicker to download and distribute and peer and all that good stuff. So this is how I recommend to create packages today. Either do it manually or doing it through a tool like the Modern Driver Automation Tool from Morris Daily which has the ability to download packages uh, for you from the vendors and with the right setting here also could create a WIM file of them in Config Manager and create a package in Config Manager. So this is just a tool that is super useful to help you create the packages, but there is nothing to prevent you from creating driver packages manually if there is a vendor that the tool does not support or you just want to create something for testing. So. Once you have these packages, there are two methods to assign them. One I call the legacy because it kind of mimics a little bit the behavior of um, Jurassic era. So if I go to legacy sequence, this one, and go down to drivers, I still have the concept of downloading a specific package uh, based on a model. A WMI query has to evaluate the true and then it will download that model. But I have a script 
to simply mount that WIM file and inject the drivers. So this is a smaller script. It just mounts the WIM, extracts the drivers, or injects the drivers from it, and then dismounts the WIM file again. So very, very quick download, but I have to maintain a reference to each and every driver package. There are use cases for this. For example, when working with offline media, you want to reference packages. But for most uh, normal network deployments, this is a bit of an overkill. Not that big of a deal if you have two models, but what if you have 72 models or, or more? Now, a better option is the modern option. This is leveraging a, well, better script, basically. But this is a PowerShell script that not only uh, downloads the right package, but also injects it at the same time. So whenever I need to add in a new model, I don't have to modify my sequences anymore. I simply just open up this tool, download whatever model I need, and I'm done. I don't have to change my sequences. With the legacy method, every time there is a new model, I would have to change, make a change into my sequence. Not the end of the world, perhaps, but it's still it's nice not having uh, to be able to do so. This solution you can download from the MS Endpoint Manager blog. I will put the link here below in the description. But this has been around for a good six, seven years now. Great solution. Even though this is a GUI, uh, it's really a PowerShell script behind the scenes. Maurice has also released the source code for this if you want to see how you build a really advanced GUI in PowerShell. Uh, it's a long script for it that way. This script is using the admin service in Config Manager to figure out what package to download. And then it calls and calls uh, this and behind the scenes to inject the drivers. So long story short, please stay away from the Jurassic era. Legacy is okay, there are use cases for it, but no matter which solution you pick, I strongly, strongly recommend to work with your driver packages here, put them as WIM files, because that makes download, distributing, and peering so much more effective. That's all I had for today. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you again for another episode. Bye for now. Thank you.